analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. NBA, some college, a little bit of everything. You know what can I say? But it wasn't going to happen here. It is that time for the Gary Tag. Oh, let's, let's not start with me. Three, two, one. It's that time for the Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Gary Tang. We're along for the right podcast. We know that Jeff has been MIA because he is swamped <laughs> with NCAA stuff. So we we miss him, but we're going to carry on. Brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Pick more, pick less. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. Okay, so we're going to get into the NCAA tournament. You went to the Garden. You saw it all. At the time of this recording, the Final Four is set. <clears throat> but first, we have to talk about the Celtics. I want to talk about their last three games overall. Mm-hmm. They won their last game. Whoopee. But then the Atlanta game, the first one, we we talked about that. I mean, that was embarrassing. Then the second game, they still lost, but it had to go to overtime. So how how are you feeling about the seas now? Uh, I'm still a little annoyed. I'm not panicked. I'm annoyed. There's, the, the 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 things are correctable technically, but you know, and then, but get inside the heads. That's not technical. That's you know, that's different. But um, the 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 problem, not the problem. The ongoing issue seems to be if we have one with this team is their con- conduct at the end of close games. And, you know, so often they don't have a close game. You know, they've won three games by 50, God knows, you know. Right. But, but consider that their last, you know, but two of their last four losses were close games in which they did not execute it as well as the other team uh, at, at the end. And and there's a lot of discussion. People even timed out that the uh, uh, one game, uh, one time Brown dribbled it 19 times and, and and Tatum 23 or vice versa, it doesn't matter. But that, those are the two numbers that people counted for their dribbles before they launched unsuccessful shots to win games. Uh, the, so their conduct at the end of the game is is under scrutiny by a lot of people, fans and media. And uh, uh, this is a, an ongoing issue, quite frankly. Uh, it's going to surface in the playoffs. They're going to have to execute at the end of games. They're not going to win every game by 20 points. So that, that's a concern. And and the thing that we, you know, I think myself is that you've got a team here that doesn't have to exclusively go to the, those guys. Uh, they have a well-balanced scoring uh, weapon uh, machinery there, and including a guy I'd like to see take some clutch shots, and that's Derek White. We know the Holiday can do it. And and you know, they've got a seven three guy that you can rely on to throw the ball into, who makes free throws. By the way, if he gets fouled, but that's the that's the thing is that these uh these these close games, uh and and the way they operate and uh, that, that's one issue. Second issue we'll get to is the offensive rebounding uh, or the rebounding where they get hurt on the offensive glass. And, right. and I thought very interesting. Joe Mazzulla addressed that, and there's like we got some quotes we want to go over with him on that score about his explanation for that. So, uh, uh, but, and also one other thing, on, I'll yield the floor here. Very interesting. I got, this is a very fascinating uh, quote from uh, Joe Mazzola. And he said that uh, 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 it's, a, it's, it's actually a good thing that, uh, uh, that people are, he, there, there people, he said the team should be, quote, Flattered. Uh, this is the. Uh, this is uh, Gary Washburn. He said the team should be flattered about the criticism, uh, 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 because it, uh, it it means that uh, uh, the people were paying attention. I guess. I mean, it, the people should be flattered about the criticism, and and uh, he said, and it's not even about you have to stay positive. You just have to stay true. That's the most important thing. You can't fake positivity. So he's kind of shrugging it off in a sense, you know, that, okay, people are upset with us, but we know what we're doing. Well, we'll see. Well, we'll see. Now, Drew Holiday was back on Thursday night. So Mm -hmm. I I don't think we can underplay his absence enough. Okay. Uh, To your point, the way of the NBA, and it was even this way when Pierce played, you know, I mean, Paul had to take the last shot. We've seen it time and time again. But you're right. There's five options, you know, with this team. You know, you've mentioned two of them. I mean, even 
Holiday doesn't care about taking the last shot, but this is what I feel. Holiday should be facilitating the last play, right? It should not be Brown or Tatum dribbling the ball into the floor. Facilitate the last play to give Brown or Tatum or Porzingis or White the best shot. And it's common sense, but Bob, for the last 20 years in the NBA, that's not the way it's done. Yeah, and well, it's, you know, ISO world, if that's what you're getting at. It is, I guess, yes. You just said it in two words. I said it in 100. But yeah, and and here's the deal, is it doesn't work for, it doesn't work for the Celtics. It does not work. What works is when Holiday runs the offense or they have movement, that's what works. When they do the ISO thing, it doesn't work. Well, you know, once in a while, you know, I mean, once in a while, yes, but but right, it's not it's not the way to go. So that's the that's the concern. Uh, and and interesting, uh, we we addressed this a um, little bit last time, and uh, it's interesting. Joe's the question arises is Joe using these games right now, all these games as as testing as 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 experimental games. Sure. And looking ahead to the playoffs. Because you know they have they're up in eleven in the loss column. They're not going to lose the. It's just a matter of right. days before that is before correct. Completely over. They've clinched the playoffs. Uh, there's only eight games left. By the way, six at home, and and uh, winnable games. So uh, he's, he's he appears to be using these games as 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 a uh, uh, experiment. You know, a, a testing mechanism and rather uh, and 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 experimental things and and uh, well, okay. Well, you know that's very interesting. Really, frankly. And uh, we'll see how that how that goes. How but that don't works. you think he knows his team by now? You'd like to think so. I mean, you know, it's not like there there haven't been any significant additions to work in this year. That the only addition that the work in during the course of the season was was Xavier Tillman, right? And who's the tenth man? Right. You know, officially, so, he's the tenth man. So and I think that you know. You know I look back to the Tuesday night game, and obviously he wanted to get his bench guys a lot of playing time. Um, but when he brought in, you know, Brown and, and Tatum, uh, they they still didn't get didn't get did it, did not get it done in the game they should have won. So obviously the win meant more to Atlanta on the second night. I just it's a slippery slope, you know. It's just it's just, just put the guys away that you should put away. That's There's what another I think. thing. Joe's flattered that people care. You know what I mean? That 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 people are looking at this team so closely. Uh, quite frankly, and uh, uh, he's, he's not, he's, he's regarding this scrutiny as a compliment. Uh, very interesting, you know, way of looking at things, frankly. He's not upset that people are nitpicking them. He's he's happy that they care enough to nitpick them and and uh, that they, uh, they have to nitpick them because the big picture is that they're pretty damn good. We all know that. And, uh, but the, 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 it, just being pretty damn good isn't going to get another flag uh, hung if Barely. they don't pay attention to some details. Um, the other thing that uh, is offensive rebounding and, and the numbers uh, and the two Atlanta games, they gave up 33 offensive rebounds to the Hawks and uh, you know, they can't bounce back against New Orleans and, and, and had a much more representative showing, but he's got all this technical explanation of what's going on. And uh, you have to really follow it very closely. He's talking about shift activity. Uh, don't get caught up in no man's land and your guy cuts behind you. You have to look at the route. It's hard to look at the box score. That just gives you the result, not the process, quote unquote. Um, and th- th- I was thinking about reading this, and of course, one of the things that people talk about uh, about is rebounding out of a zone is that you don't have your body on the guy automatically. Right. And he's just implying that that's the same thing with the nature of their own sh- uh, ability to, to switch on defense. And uh, that. All right, I never heard that theory before. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, applying it in that sense. We'll see, but and he, but he does make a, a very good point because the first, the Bob Ryan first rule of rebound, very simple. Do you want the damn ball or don't you? Right. Go get the damn ball. I usually, I usually use another adjective, and and that's number one. Then you you talk positioning and you talk timing, and then last and least important is jumping, frankly. And so, but the number one is you want the ball or don't you? And uh, he's saying uh, the first this, I was this quote now from from Joe Mazzola. The first teaching point is to guard the ball better. The second teaching point is to be aware of shit down at the end. And the third one is to go get the ball. 
there were six that we didn't go get the ball. This is the last game in Atlanta. You just have to the root, get to the root and coach. Well, I think it's number one. It's not number three, but I see what he's saying. But believe me, the number one is you want the damn ball, or don't you? Right. <clears throat> and go get the ball. Um, they they have had games where they have been the dominant. They've been the aggressor. They've won games in part because of aggressive offensive rebounding. It's not like they can't do it. I just hope that this is a point of emphasis when the big games start. I want to I want to know that they are really uh, that they uh, want to cover that base very closely. That uh, they want to make sure that they do the job uh, on the defensive boards and and don't get hurt on the offensive boards. Uh, and obviously against New Orleans, they were locked in. They played great defense. They, you know, they were they, enough was enough. And right, they enough straightened enough, things I out. Finally, I uh, that's good. You know, good. And, and but but let uh, me ask you this, Bob, because I do want to get into the college stuff. Yeah. What's your gut telling you? What is Bob Ryan, Hall of Famer, uh, you know, 50 years on the beat, what is your gut telling you about this team in the playoffs? That they have to prove themselves, that I'm not convinced that they have the championship je ne sais quoi, the championship uh, uh, awareness, to what it means, the, the detail, the, the desire to to do with all the little things uh that they, they i think believe that i believe they are the most talented you know team in the league at every junction one to five one to six seven eight nine right down to ten with tillman no i wouldn't trade this roster technically technically for any other roster in the league no no you're nothing there's no other team i'd rather have technically but you know we know one team that has proven itself uh, well, and, and, and lately, and that that does, and they don't have to have, and, and that's Denver. I try, I, and and they have to follow a blueprint of of the Warriors in their glory years too. That pay attention to detail. I'm not convinced. I'm I'm hopeful, but I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm reasonably confident that that they'll, you know. But they have to they have to prove it. I mean, I'm sorry, they have to prove it. And they start with Tatum, and uh, it starts with Tatum. And 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 he has to, uh, you know, play uh, the, as well as he can play in these playoffs and and, and play intelligently. Uh, but they don't need a talent infusion. They do not need any technically. Although you know, the one place area of vulnerability has been at times this offensive rebounding that we talked about. I think that I think with the team that they have, it's correctable. It's not like they don't right. have the bodies to get the job done. I think that I think it's mm -hmm. correct. So. Um, you know, but I think that I'm not making them the favorites. To me, Denver's the favorite until further notice. And, and um, you know, I'm, uh, they, they have something to prove. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's a tournament season or the fight for a playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Testing my skills on Prize Picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Prize Picks is really simple to play, and I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds download the app today and use code clns for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars use the code clns for the first deposit match up to a hundred dollars pick more pick less it's that easy okay bob let's go to the ncaa tournament first of all i want to ask you about your experience watching the games in boston that uh it, it continues to be a good venue uh, the crowd was good. Uh, um, obviously, uh, I heard good comp I have compliments from people that were covering it about the way it was run, uh, complimenting BC, uh, who are the host of the institution, uh, the people that they hired to get the jobs done. Uh, only good things. Uh, I have, you know, so that's that's my impression. I was a fan up in the section 301. So I, I strictly spoke as a fan. I, I, my experience was very good with my daughter watching those games. Um, the the, uh, uh, the impression of the of the quality of play was un, it was uneven, and I do think that uh, the Iowa State Illinois game was marred by by the the worst kind of college over officiating. The, and, and I you know I've said this for thirty years that, that every official at every level 
should have to pass a pass fail quiz before every game he or she referees. And that question is, why am I here? And, and you are not here to demonstrate to us that you know every comma in the rule book. You are here to adjudicate the smooth flow of the game, no more, no less. And, and these officials have failed that at, uh, very badly at, at times and, and, and at the garden. Um, and so that, that was a little bit of a marring, uh, something that marring. Now, the overall impression, I went into the tournament, overall saying UConn's the best team after watching the Big East tournament. And they, they clearly are the best team. Uh, they can lose, they're not invincible, but they're the best team. And I will be very surprised if they do not win the, the championship this year. What I'm, what I'm observing, and I was texting my old television colleague, Donnie Marshall. Oh, yes. And I was just like, Donnie, <laughs> is it me or has the quality play really gone down? And there's a couple of reasons for that. Like he, te you know, I, 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 I I don't think it's a big deal. I, you know, he said COVID obviously set people back. But I think COVID, I think players getting to the NBA via other, whether they go to the G League, being one and done. If a player is one year and done, they don't have a chance to mature and become a great college player. And they go to the NBA and maybe in three or four years, they will be a good NBA player. And then the guys who stick around in college aren't as good as the ones who are one and done, <laughs> right? I mean, they're not, you know, yeah. so it's just the qual every year. I just say, okay, it's great that Alabama's there. It's great that, okay, we have an NC state, which is an 11 seed, you know, which beat a, a Duke team, a number four seed that Duke was not that good. And I just go, the product is just, it's just not what it was. Um, yeah, I think I agree with you in general. Also, the fact with this, uh, and it's going to get only going to get worse because uh, in terms of the continuity, uh, the, the the teams aren't TEAMs the way they they should be. Right. The constant influx of turnover personnel. The the, yeah. the right the the transfer portal issue, uh, of course. Uh, uh, so it's going it's going to be a factor as you're trying to find a team that has been together for a while. You know, and and like the last great college team I love that played together and they chose to stay in school is Florida. It is. And you know how long ago that was, folks? That was 2006, seven, their second one. So that's how long ago we're talking here, that uh, that, that last great team. And that, you know, and that was Noah, why they that... were a great team. It's because Joe Kim Noah and, and chose to come back. Right, in Morford. Year, but he could have gone out. Right. And Corey Gaines did. And I think Al, Al was a younger, you're younger. He was younger. Not, all right. But that, that was a great, last truly great college team. Uh, right. That was the oh, was Florida back to backs, and there's a scant chance we'll ever see a team that good again because of the constant influx and turnover personnel that we have everywhere. Um, so that that's part of it. Uh, there's like there's, but UConn though they're good, they're damn good. Well, they, enough they, of me bitching and moaning. Let's talk they about touch the all the bases. Well, um, who they, can't, okay, so one. we're looking at like Purdue. Look, I want to talk about the Purdue big guy. All right, because oh. I can't figure. <laughs> I'm trying to get a real read on it. Like he had 40 points in this 40 game. today. Yeah, he had 40. So I'm like, where the hell did these come from? You know, because at first I'm like, he doesn't move that well. Um, I'm talking about Edie. He doesn't move that well. Yeah, Jack Edie. yeah you know, he, he doesn't move that well. Everything is around the basket. Does he have a jump shot? You know, it, that, you know, he's 7'4", but 7'4 guys in the league can handle. Um, people don't think he's going to be drafted. How do you feel about him? He's a throwback player. This is this is a throwback player uh, without any question. Today's game, I don't remember anything that was more. His range was six, three feet. The whole game, they got 40 points. This is totally. an old fashioned player, unlike, you know, Christoph Porzingis, you know. Right. Okay. Um, Klingon can shoot from outside. This is the kid of Connecticut a little bit. A little bit. Right. Donovan Klingon, who's seven two, which that's the matchup I'm praying for when we get to Phoenix is that's the game I want. I want Kukon and Purdue. I want to see those two go in at each other. But, um, right, oh, Zach Eady is a throwback player. Uh, I, I would love to see the shot chart on today's game for the 40 points uh, because there was there was nothing resembling a jump shot that well, I would it, it would just be a big – it'd be a dark circle under the hoop. But that's – you know, but he he knows what he's doing down there. He's, he's, he's agile enough. Uh, he has a sufficient lateral mobility. And 
He's ambidextrous. He's very confident, comfortable going uh, right. with his left as well. And and uh, so it's not just a matter of sitting over, going over his left shoulder. He can go over his right shoulder too. Um, and and the, the team knows how to play, you know, how to how to use him very well. Um, so yeah, they're they're. Yeah. I'm happy that they're there. I mean, I think and, and he's he, he's a very uh, self aware kid. He's uh, from from Toronto. You know, he's a Canadian. yeah, oh, he's Canadian. Oh yeah, 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 Canadian. Yeah. And uh, and he's aware of the the big man criticism these days, and he wants to. And he wasn't recruited as heavily as he thinks he should have been. And so he's playing with a, a metaphorical chip on his shoulder. So you got a seven four guy playing with a chip on his shoulder. That's pretty. That's pretty intimidating, um, for sure. So uh, I'm I'm you know yeah he's he's intriguing. Um, the but overall you know the NC State is a they've won now nine straight since the start of the tournament and right. the ACC tournament. And this is a throwback to 03, uh, 83, you know? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, this is what they did. I can tell you, I, I, I cite that every year when the tournament comes, I'm a broken record on this one, okay? I remember being at the Big East tournament in 1983, in between games in Madison Square Garden, and watching on television the end of NC State's first round ACC tournament game. If they don't win, they're NIT bound. All right. If they don't win that game and they're in trouble with a minute to go, they I don't know where they were trailing, but they 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 go down that they pull it out. And the first round of the I remember watching it. We it was in between games in New York. So I was able to watch the game. And and so they they luck. They, they pull it out in the first round of the ACC tournament in a desperation winner go home, you know, thing. And the next and then a couple of weeks, you know, three weeks later, they're they're sipping the champagne metaphorically they're winning right cutting down the nets i'll let it put it that way they're cutting down the nets in in, in albuquerque and um so that's this is they're going to have to follow the same path now you can't follow this path in 11 when they they ran through the ace the uh, big east tournament right they weren't anywhere near a favorite that year and 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 they wound up winning the championship but this is an nc state uh, valvano's you know smiling down kind of oh, thing yeah. and all that stuff uh and of course, they have this lovable big man. It's going to be, you know, everybody's DJ, yeah. now being charmed by DJ Burns. And what and a great a kid, though. Major, I mean, small, oh, I musician, he had a big game, red. He had a big game tonight, and uh, you know they're going to be fun to have around. In the, in the, in the. In the but you know what I love about that kid? You know what he said after the game? He said, "When I stop loving to play basketball, I'll, I'll stop playing." And I, I, you believe him? I mean, they did a piece on him. He's a musician. He loves to read. He has other interests. I mean, mm -hmm. I, he's just a role model. I mean, I love no, it's nice. Guy. No, it, it's good to find. That's great. It's great to, you know, and, and he'll be a source of greater interest in, in we, when we get to Phoenix. And I say we because I am going to Phoenix. Oh, uh, good. We, we, my wife and I will be there. Um, uh, so so we got, the, they're the outlier, the 11th seed, but but they're still a, a, a you know, a blue blood organization still, you know, that they, they just happen to, you know, be an 11th seed this year, but they, They've got some pedigree in them, and uh, uh, so that's really good. Uh, so, no. Anyway, but UConn. Yeah. But, they, but let me let me ask you about UConn because we expect UConn to beat Alabama. I mean, we get that, you know. Um, by the way, I just whenever I see Alabama play, and I love that Gene Cady was there for Purdue. I just love the all. I a throwback to the old coaches like Wim Sanderson in the jacket. You know, <laughs> I mean, what a character. You know. Yeah, I, I mean, guys like that and Gene Cady, who, when he was on the sideline, he always looked so mean. I mean, <laughs> he used to scare the hell out of me. So, and it's great they gave him a, a string from one of the the nets tonight when they cut they cut down the net. And I love Purdue's coach. I mean, I remember when he played hell. Um, but UConn, why is UConn Bob far and above everybody else? Is it the recruiting? Is it the coaching? What is it? Well, they they now if. They've now taken this is the third different coach to take them to a final four. Started with Calhoun and then went to Kevin Ali. Right. And now and now it's Danny Hurley, who clearly is, a, is an excellent, excellent coach. And he's been it from the he's a coaching, you know, his his daddy's oh, son. Yeah, sure. yeah. He's his daddy's son, and that he was his his record, his first coaching job was at St. Benedict's prep in, in Newark, New Jersey. And uh and and he had a phenomenal record there, and he parlayed that to go to to uh, read URI and, and now here he is. Okay. Uh, uh, and it was, and so uh, he's really, he can really coach. Um, they, they've got a culture now, you know, and, and, and uh, he's, he's following, 
the, it, basketball matter. Look at look at the women. They've won 11 championships on the women and five in the men. And, and this is their seventh final four. And, uh, uh, they, you know, they got an outside chance. That the women have an outside chance of winning. Right. So they could, they could have the parlay. By the way, NC State's got the women are, are playing, you know, tomorrow for their, their, right. their, 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 they may go too. So anyway, um, it, 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 basketball matters. It matters. It always mattered to a degree. I, you know, back in the fifties, they dominated the old Yankee conference and the sixties right. still pretty good. But, and, and, and yet when they entered the big East in 1979, for the first half a dozen years or so, they were the doormat of the league, UConn. And it wasn't until Calhoun came in and, and turned them around within two years, they won the NIT. And in the third year they went to the tournament and, 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 you know, they've been UConn ever since. And, uh, uh, and Calhoun, you know, Made, and Gino Oriyama, what they both have done to make Stores, Connecticut, a destination is really a, re a remarkable thing, frankly, you know, and, and they both deserve the credit. And, and, and Danny now is, is following and, and of course, his father has won 25 state championships. He's in the Hall of Fame, Bobby Sr., uh, you know, so but they've got culture. But the team technically this year, they touch all the bases. They've got the best one-two center punch in America because not only do they have a seven-two kid who can play, they come off the bench with a six-ten kid who could play. Sam Samson Johnson, the best player ever to come out of Togo, by the way, and I don't mean Palazzi. I'm talking about the Central African na nation of Togo, right. um, and uh, he's a he's a. And I, I tell people, you can just turn over the hourglass; it's going to happen. When he comes in, they are throwing him a lob as soon as they can. He gets a lob within four or five possessions every game. So watch for that when you see the semifinals. The, the, when Samson Johnson comes in, they're lobbing to him. I would like to think the opponents all know. I know, I know. So, I mean, that's what's going to happen. But they, they've they got excellent guard play. They've got a wonderful forward from Southbridge, Massachusetts, Alex Caraban. They've got a nice uh, – uh, and, and here's my favorite, favorite player. Not that he's the best, naturally, but – they come out to skid Hassan Diara, and he he is so sneaky good, and he gets the job done. And when the game is over, I'm sure the other team looks at the stat sheet. How do you get the where those ten points come from? And he'll he'll get them one way or the other. And he's a spark plug and energy guy, so they've got that going for him. They have everything going for him. They defend the hell out of it. Um, you know they're they're the best team. They can have an off night, but how about? A 30-0 run. You know, I'm watching this game, and I, I knew they had a 25-0 run to start the second half, you know? Yeah. I forgot about the five points at the end of the first half. Yeah, the the the, the, the score at the game, the the final score was much closer. Oh, some, I, so, it, but, it doesn't, I mean, yeah. when have you ever seen at any level a 30-0 run? Oh, no, they're dominant. I mean, and they're were, they were winning by 27 points a game so far in the tournament. That's uh, that You would like to say that can't continue, but until somebody stops them, it might. Uh, so, but, but, you know, what, what, a, what a, imagine being a UConn fan and you got the, the, the men and the women. And uh, once again, it's not the first time they didn't win it once. Oh together. yeah. Oh yeah. And, oh, oh, yeah. And, uh, it's, it's a remarkable thing and stores Connecticut. God love them, you know, good. Well, uh, I think we're all hoping for Purdue UConn. And I think that that's what, that's oh, I want the big men. Absolutely. I want Klingon yeah. and, and, and Edie. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I got Purdue, Purdue's knocked on the door. It's the third. The first time he went to the Final Four, they had no chance in the championship game. You know why? They were playing Lou Alcindor's farewell season, and they got whacked. It was, that was with Rick Mount, nineteen sixty nine. Yeah. And then uh, in nineteen eighty, uh, that was the Joe Barry Carroll team. That uh, oh, that, that's right, Joe. Yep. Yeah. And they they were they built they deserved to be there, but they weren't good enough. And that was that was Louisville, and uh, and now they're back again. And and, uh, and 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 they 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 won the Big Ten. They've been consistently good. Gene Cady was a terrific coach, a Hall of Fame coach. They should be if he isn't. I, I don't, I'm not sure if he is or not. But uh, uh, Gene Cady and they, 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 basketball matters there. Football matters there. Sports matter there. Was uh, was that eighty Louisville team? Uh, obviously, that was Denny Crum. Was that Doctor Duncan Steen and Daryl Griffin? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Right. That was the team. Yeah. And that was the year that UCLA got there with Larry Brown, and they were reported that was a 48 team tournament and they were reportedly but no one could prove it the 48 team invited they got in and they went all the way to the final four right and that was kiki vandaway okay kiki and, Van. and uh and 19 i was in indianapolis for that one but uh, uh so anyway purdue was there and i know here's the funny thing the celtics that's you had the number one pick 
and and uh, uh, and I was definitely afraid. I did not like Joe Barry Carroll. Right. I thought he was a big. You know, he didn't. I just didn't like him as a player. And I was so petrified they were going to take him. And that's the year they got Mikhail. They traded sure. out Mikhail. Thank God. So and Parrish eventually, right? And Robert and Mikhail, one of the great ultimate swindles in the history of. They, they, that was for Joe Barry Carroll and Ricky Brown. He was the 13th pick. That's that was, that was what it was. And if you remember Ricky Brown, you're a pretty good fan of sport and basketball. <laughs> uh, was that one of the few times that Bob Ryan agreed with Red Arback or? Uh... Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, no. What makes you say that? What no, I don't, you... I'm just being. I, I, had a, I, had a, I had a couple of, you know, things with Red, but but basically, oh, no, I mean, uh, he, he wasn't invincible. It was infallible, excuse me. You know, he, but. Uh, um, but no, basically, I'm, I'm was fine on red, and I'm proud that the red. I, I think we got along great. But I, but that was, I'll tell you what, uh, I think I know the protagonist on that deal. It was Bill Fitch. Bill Fitch had his eye on Robert Parrish. I know this from my conversations, my breakfast conversations at the airport. You know, things like that. Right. Cups of coffee with Fitch, and and he, he. I couldn't quote him because that'd be tampering, but I know he really lusted to get his hands on Robert Parrish, who he thought was being underutilized, particularly not running the floor the way he could run the floor. And uh, we also, you know, he was 100% correct with, with, with his observation and his evaluation of Robert Parrish. But I'm going to give, uh, Red gets all the credit, of course, because he got all the credit for everything. But Bill Fitch was the driving force to get Robert Parrish. And so drafting here, Larry, a year early, right? And yes. then making this deal. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, drafting the Larry, here's the other thing we'll never know. And I never asked Red specifically, and he might he might have resented it. Then again, he might have laughed at me. I don't know what he would have said. But, you know, they had two picks that year. They had six and eight. And Larry was number six. And number eight, they took Freeman Williams. I want to know, would he have would he have taken Larry if he only had one pick? Not knowing that he was definitely going to get him. Oh wow! Okay, and and I never had the guts, the the cojones to ask the big man. Okay, Red, you're so smart. Would you have taken Larry if you only had one first round pick? No, I didn't have the guts to do that. <laughs> well, he so, probably he, he would have just even if it wasn't true, he would have told you absolutely. He would have blown smoke in my face or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, he was a delight to hang around. It, Red was because Red was smart and very had a good sense of humor and and uh, and and you know uh, he he was you know but he he could get he, when he was angry you know you one way you don't want to be on the bad side but but he was a, he was a delight he was one of those guys in this city has been very fortunate to have more than a few i would say red parcells um i think terry francona with the red sox uh you know even milbury with the brewers at the time oh yeah he and was talking about talking about coaches that were perfect for this market yeah no you're right uh, <laughs> that's that's exactly right you know they they loved it they thrived on it they they weren't afraid of the media uh oh, and oh, and, and we got one we got one right now and alex cora he completely gets it totally he gets it completely. I think Montgomery does too, by the way, with the Bruins. Yeah, just I mean, uh, I don't but, know, but I also don't think, Bob, and I'm going down a different path here, yeah. because of the demands of the reporters today with social media yeah, and the, the constant need for information, I don't think there's the animosity between reporters and coaches that there once was. Because I think, I think and, and this is no disrespect to the reporters, I mean, Thank God Shaughnessy, God bless him, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, I can remember when I started in this business in the, you know, in the eighties, you know, I remember the guys from the Herald and whether it be Kimball or Gilliotti or Mannix or, you know, over at the Globe, you know, Ryan or Shaughnessy or Le Montville. I mean, any number of you guys could take on a coach or a man, you know, Yeah. and now because I think guys need access, they can't do it as often. Yeah. I'm I, I don't, you know, I'm hesitate to criticize them. They live in a world that I did not. I got out of that world. Yeah, you know, it, it's not even a criticism. Time. It's I not even a. It, it's a. It's an observation. Like I, I don't even mean to be critical. I think it's. I think they have to do it to maintain the job. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's too bad. I mean, I, I have zero regrets about the the time I spent or the time that 
I got right. out. I think I got out. It was good for me. You know, I don't. And uh, absolutely. No, I was lucky. I mean, some of the some of the memories. I mean, you know, we, we talked about Red, but uh, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, Willie McDonough. Oh, Will, Will, you know, Will. Oh, Willie. Phenomenal. There'll never be another Will McDonough. Oh, that, my God. that we can safely say. You know, there will never be another Will McDonough. Uh, uh, the stuff that he quote got away, really things he got away with in a will unbelievable you know but uh, no he was he was I used to kid Larry Lucchino because before Willie died I said you were the last guy that Willie trashed he was really, he trashed Larry Lucchino on the Sunday before Willie died Willie, Willie died you know basically he died he had a he dropped dead literally you know at watching the eleven o'clock news at home yeah. And, and and uh you know it was not no one saw it coming it was a shock uh no one liked him but i'll tell you what he was good to me um oh he's the best uh, oh he's great he, he was great was i mean the good. whole the i just look back at that whole generation of oh, media bud collins, bud collins oh, bud, was, yeah. oh, what a what a mentor he was for me you know and, sure. in so many ways and and uh oh my god i was just so lucky to come up you know to come up with these guys and and the, you know, the globe was a treasure chest. In a, a yeah, you, Jackie, candy. and Dan, and you know, Gammons. I mean, it's it murderous row. Yeah, no, it it's really just a different world. It's just, it's never gonna, it's just, you know, you can't write long form anymore. Everything is short form. I mean, yeah. I know you do, but you know, well, and game well, stories, game stories are on Twitter. People you know? don't, you know, people don't know that it's, yeah. and I'm, you know, and that's what I took the most pride in of anything that I ever did, you know, and, and including the 24 years of writing the columns was, was game stories, you know, under on deadline, you know, uh, in those days you, you couldn't, you know, people use them. They loved, they, they, not all, every game wasn't on TV, I you know, know, the way it yeah. is now, you know, there might be, you know, if the Celtics in, in the eighties, there might be 50 games out of 82, you know, okay. But now it's 82 out of 82. Oh you yeah. Know? And, and, um, you know, it's just different in the world that, and people are, you know, they're consuming things on their phone immediately and, and you know, why taking advantage of the modern technology? I do it myself every night. I'm watching. I'm, I'm keeping up with stuff. You know, I'm trying oh, to yeah, keep up. With yeah, stuff. yeah. It's just, but like I remember, you know, you'd read a Gammons game story or a Ryan game story or even Borges, you know, or you know, Willie wasn't really doing it when I came. You know, he was obviously yeah. a columnist, but you know, your your presence in the game story, well, like you knew who was writing it. You could hear the voice <laughs> of the person. Yeah. You know, you could hear the Ryan voice, the staccato. You know, where Gammons was probably a little more dramatic, where Bob was more pa 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 Like you wrote the way you spoke. Anyways, enough of the enough of memory lane. Uh, one thing we're gonna yeah. point out as so we we're we're on a Sunday evening here. Uh I the, the tonight the uh, Lakers beat the Nets tonight, which the Nets are out of it. You know, they have no bearing. Right. You know, every game the Lakers matter, every game for them. Uh A, LeBron had forty shooting nine for ten on threes. So don't forget, he's still he's still alive and kicking, folks. In case anybody wants to know, okay. And number two, the Nets op they started the game going scoreless for the first six minutes and twenty one seconds. Oh my god! Before they scored a point, all right. Brutal. And one more interesting tidbit of this game, apropos of you know, just because it because the Lakers won the game. Uh, was, uh, they won the game. Oh, 116 to 104 with two bench points. Wow. Gabe, Gabe Vincent had two. Oh, the 114 of the 116 points were starters. And, and that's low scoring in today's NBA. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, I mean, that's a just an oddity I thought out there. Okay. Anyway, life goes on. We got the final, we got the, the final four set. I'll be going. Uh, I don't even know if it's my 32nd or 33rd. I lost track over the years. It's but. very nice of Mrs. Ryan to accompany you. She she loves it, and she has a, it's a great social event, too. You know, you see old friends, and, and um, yeah, but she likes the games very much. She's a, well, you're going to be in Phoenix. Maybe you can go over to, you know, you I, whenever you mention Phoenix, I always love the story about you sitting by the pool with Paul Westfall and Pat oh, Riley in 552 West, 552 West Burridge Lane it was, the, was his address. I'll never forget it. I, I, I should drive by just for the hell of it. Yeah, <laughs> my God. All right, Bob, thank you. We'll talk to you again. Okay, take care, Gary.